So you're wanting to add detail shots or some more cinematic looking shots to your real estate videos or interior photography. But when you're first starting out, they might end up looking like this or this or even this. <laughs> but it definitely does not have to stay like that. So in today's video, we're gonna go over five ways to make those shots instantly look way more epic. So thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. Now real quick, before we get into these tips, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, which is Epidemic Sound the best place to get your music and sound effects for your videos. And for this video, they are really hooking us up. So as always, you can try it out for free for 30 days, but for the next month, you can use my code TB25 to get 25% off the personal plan if you pay annually. So huge savings if you are using this for your business or for your own content creation. So if you haven't tried Epidemic Sound yet and wanna save a lot of money, make sure to check that out. Now on to the first tip. So tip number one is probably the easiest thing to fix, but also one of those things that is gonna really differentiate a photographer or videographer versus like a grandma doing photos at a family gathering or something. Not hitting on old people, but you are gonna know what I mean. So the biggest thing to avoid is taking any photos at eye level, pointing down at something. It's amazing how big of a difference shooting at a lower perspective, even just lowering the camera a couple feet, shooting kind of at stomach level, waist level, and working on getting those verticals straight if it's an object or if it's architectural details. It's gonna really give that perspective to make the object look important, make it look structurally sound. And if you shoot a little bit lower than it, you can actually make something look a little bit more larger than life. So you can really emphasize things in different ways by changing how high you're shooting it from. And another quick rule of thumb for product photography, which is basically what these kind of shots are, um, doing a straight on shot, doing a 45 degree angle shot, is gonna look good so if you're not sure about it that's at least a great way to start tip number two add lifestyle props to your compositions to make it feel like there's a little bit of a story to it interior photography and real estate photography can get super boring because basically you're shooting these lifeless spaces where nothing's happening uh, which serves its own purpose. People can imagine themselves living there, but sometimes adding a prop can really uh, help with that imagination. Even just adding a wine glass to a table or doing some place settings or opening a door so someone can imagine walking out onto a balcony, um, those things can all really, really make a big difference. And if you have someone else around or wanna hire someone to do this, you can also do some really cool stuff by adding people to the shots. And if you're using a self timer, you could even use yourself as a blurry person. And as long as these are adding to the picture, adding to the story, uh, these can be really, really useful. Tip number three is to use focus and foreground to enhance your storytelling and take it to the next level. So we can force the viewer to focus on something really interesting and specific by using a small depth of field and making something stand out that might not really show up like they do if you're using a narrow aperture that shows everything sharp and detailed. And for foreground elements, if we're showing a view out a window, instead of just showing that perfect view like a stock photo, you can scoot back a little bit and incorporate some details from inside the house like a window frame or whatever area of the house the view is coming from. So like the kitchen sink window or the dining area or something like that. That way, if you're using these for marketing, people can see the context of where that view is coming from and it makes it look more believable that that's the actual view they're gonna get if they're buying this house. And on top of that, it can help frame things really nicely and just looks really cool um, for photography. But for video, you can use those as foreground elements to um, you know, add some just really nice cinematic movements, but I'm sure you guys already know that. And just like focus, perspective, and props can take your scene to the next level, so can music and sound effects. So that's why I'm proud to partner with Epidemic Sound for this video. 
They really have all the options with over 40,000 royalty free tracks and 90,000 sound effects. One of my favorite things that keeps me using Epidemic Sound year after year is that it's just so easy to find stuff. It literally takes me five or 10 minutes for each project. And I can almost always find exactly what I need right on the homepage since they curate new picks custom to what you typically download. So on the rare chance that I don't find something right on the homepage, I'll just go in and look at some of the new curated playlists and if something sounds kind of like the type of project I'm working on, I'll go check that out and usually I'll find something right away. I even have my own Real Estate Essentials playlist on there if you want to check that out too. And one cool thing you can do while you're doing these long hours on shoots is actually download their app. So Epidemic Sound has an app that you can get on your phone to stream all the music and everything while you're shooting, which is really fun. And if you're doing this while you're on location, you can kind of figure out the vibe of the video you're gonna edit or the photo album that you're producing. And if you find something while you're on the shoot, you could even get it approved from your client before you even leave. Then you could like it, save it to a playlist, whatever works for you, and pull it up right when you get home and save you tons of time back and forth on your edits. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out Epidemic Sound. Use that code TB25 to get 25% off the personal annual plan, which is only available for the next month. So make sure that if that's something you need, jump on that opportunity while you can. So once again, big thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So I think we've actually got three more tips. So these are gonna be focused for videographers and for people doing social media content. So stay tuned. So next tip, use time as something that can add interest to your videos. This is one of the most underused things I think in this industry because it takes some time and I can't really think of many instances where I've seen a time lapse used in a real estate video, but I think it just shows a really unique perspective on whatever the video is about and broadens the scope of the project a lot, I think. I think it just really makes it more of a story. So I think it's definitely worth trying to grab at least a couple while you're on each shoot and find a way to incorporate that into your video. Most cameras today have a built-in time-lapse function, um, even drones, even cell phones. So there's pretty much endless creative possibilities that you can come up with using time lapses. And to save time, if you don't have a second camera that can just do time lapses, you could definitely set up your phone on a tripod and get some really cool time lapses and maybe get like three or four throughout the duration of your normal real estate shoot. Just set it up for like 15 minutes or something and you don't even really have to do much. Just move the tripod around, avoid it in your other shots and you'll be good to go. One more thing that I have been a lot more intentional lately, and this can be for photo or video, um, is to shoot some shots that are gonna leave some blank negative space in the middle of the composition so that it's really, really easy to put text over it. So if it's for photography, these could be great to use for marketing materials. Uh, people could put stuff over them in Photoshop or for videos. Obviously you're gonna need to put titles, you're gonna need to put phone numbers and information. And if all your compositions are just too busy, uh, it never ends up looking that great. So just by scooting your camera over a little bit, clearing up the composition, getting some shots like that is going to really, really help make your end production look more thoughtful and better, I think. All right, last one. This one's super basic, but it is to always overshoot. You can always delete stuff later and it never hurts to try some different angles, get some shots from a little bit of a different distance from the subject. So maybe just scoot back like five or 10 feet and try incorporating some different foreground elements in there that you might not have done before. You never know. Most of the time I get my best shots just by moving around with my camera, mostly set up and I'll stumble onto something that looks cooler. Also having extra shots never hurts for your edit or for multi-purpose, multi-platform scenarios. And that's it. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I was actually at this beach house shooting these shots 
to add to my upcoming course on real estate video foundations that I'm working on. But I decided to go ahead and share this with you guys and I hope it helps you. So once again, big thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Make sure to use that code for 25% off if you're getting that personal annual plan. Or if you're watching this in the future, you can use the link to get a free 30 day trial. But either way, I know you're going to like it. And that's it for this video. So as always, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.